遅れるなさあ行くぞいいだろうこのランキーいいなお前のために一振りの剣となろう What's happening, everybody? It's your boy Hardcorn, and today we're going to be looking at a brand new character in Action Time and Lena. She herself is a Hell Knight, just like Ingrid, and she shares many of the same traits and abilities with her. She's a Protect Demon, just like her master Ingrid, and they. But sadly, she doesn't share the same weapons as her. Lena carves her own path by using the her own katana, and she shares the same weapons as Anne Rose and Asagi. So if you spend all that time leveling Asagi, you'll already have most of the work done. Lena has learned many things from Ingrid and it's very evident in her skill set and actions. So let's take a look at what she's got in store. So let's take a look at her stats. I'll put up her 75 so you can compare and contrast them. But at 81, she's got 5824, 4744, 4326, and 4844 in her respective four stats. So when you compare them to other characters, Lena now has surpassed Spinel, surpassed Ingrid, in terms of having the highest attack at 81. And in fact, this at, even at 75 she does this as well. Defensive is 4326. It puts her at the bottom half of the pack, so she's not very keen on taking hits. Not as much as Ingrid where she'll just fold if she takes a hit in the first place, but Lena solves uh, her damage problem pretty easily. And criticals is 4844. Sakura herself at 81 is at 4802. And her criticals right here are at 4844. So she surpasses her by just a couple of points. Aina actually at level 81 sits at 4970. So she hasn't yet to beat she's yet to beat her, but it's certainly this is very high for a melee character. Now we move on to her weapons. She shares her weapons with Asagi. Like I said earlier, so if you manage to actually progress and get all kinds of weapons for Asagi, you've been collecting them, upgrading them, and just keeping them in storage, you've already got most of the work done for Lena herself. Her butterfly weapon is really, really good on her because it innately boosts her by 20%, and it boosts her already high critical. It, it, it supplements her crits immensely. Even her gacha weapon does this really well. Critical damage by 2% with, ever, with all the stacks that she gains, and she gains a lot of stacks very, very quickly. She will not have any sort of problem uh, getting hitting maximum stacks, even in just regular combat. Arena weapon, same thing, just knight stat stick. This is her package weapon, so whenever an enemy spawns in, they get an 1836 for 9 seconds. So that's nice, it's not really worth the package though. She can use that, she can't use really anything else like any of Anne Rose's weapons, but she can use, most importantly, Senketsu. Senketsu allows her to heal with every skill she's got, and since her skills crit a lot and hit a lot at the same time, they're really high hit counts, she can just top up and just heal for days and turtle everything that gets in her way. It's a, this is like a, this is already a good weapon, and now it gets put on a character that can just take advantage of it really, really easily. She can use the summer weapons. She can't use any of Asagi's limited weapons either. She can use Ya, her Momochi weapon, but I would say against it because you get a lot better results out of the butterfly or her gacha weapon in the first place. Here we have Lena's costumes. She's going to have her rival outfit be with Ingrid, and then she's also going to have her RPGX outfit as Desire Shop a day off outfit, the maid outfit, the bath towel, and also the seeker gift one as well. Then her affinity points at maximum are going to give you a 20% boost to drop rates whenever equipped in your main menu. So now let's go take a look at all of her skills, the real meat of the bones of the situation, and compare and contrast her to Ingrid and sometimes Rinko, because that's a decently apt comparison between the two. So we'll start off with her time in an art, one of them at least. Unorthodox Swordsmanship, Storm. It's one of two timing and arts for her. It's the damage boosting variant and it makes her hit 
very hard and also just slightly faster as well. It's very welcome because her basic attack chain initially is extremely clunky and slow. You want to probably either pick up one of these or you just go straight for skill spam and wait for them to come off a cooldown. And if you have actually a speed booster on her, it makes the sort of um, non-speed boosting version kind of redundant because you'll have both the speed and the power at the same time. If you have the butterfly weapon, it kind of solves a lot of her problems. In fact, it solves most of the character's problems that have them in the first place. Now I'll move on to Vanish. Lena has learned a lot from her master in the first place while putting her own twist on things. And this is Lena's version of Crescent Slash. Blue over time has gotten many more boosts to damage, which has benefited Ingrid, and it's also going to help out Lena a lot. Lena's gone for the more self-serving route with an attack, range, and critical buff with the set. Compared to Ingrid's that hits in a small area of in front of her twice with a critical boost, or with a crit rate boost, not to mention a lower cooldown. Vanish takes finesse to use though because of the windup it has, so if she gets run up on, she'll have the skill go into cooldown. That's why you really want to use the butterfly weapon because it speeds the entire animation up so she can uh, go directly into danger and immediately use this. Because if it doesn't crit, you just probably did 500,000 damage. It's a really hard hitting attack in the first place. Now Raging Tempest over here is another contingency. This one creates a storm aura effect that attacks her, attacks in intervals that surrounds her. Not to mention that on usage it creates a knockback effect that's built in which makes it better than most of the same type. Ingrid does not have this, because with her ability and skill, how would ever Ingrid be touched? This is more or less a learned trait for Lena, because, you know, she's a bit clumsy, she gets hit all the time. It's not something I would take very often. Now, here's her other time in an art, uh, Cherry Blossom. This is the speed booster version, and it sim works similar to Ingrid's demon swordsmanship, but is more like Felicia's vampire blood. This makes it so that her basic attack now basic attack string now gains two ranged attacks for every one hit. The ranged part hits multiple times, which makes it really nice for particle generation. It's good to see when characters integrate effects like this into their strings because it just looks nice in general. This is going to be an ongoing theme with um, Lena's whole set, is that she has one or two melee hits on the attack itself, and then the rest of the damage is going to come from the ranged particles that come after this. You can, you can use Cherry Blossom by, its, by itself in training. You know, she'll probably hit for 250,000 damage uh, across like a, a minute when you use the skill itself. And then you'll do 900,000 more damage with just the particle effects itself. Now we're going to move on to Cherry Blossom Storm. It's the classic dash and slash skill on a low cooldown just like Ingrid's. The student surpasses the master here by having this set have really, really strong effects. Defense down, range boost, and a base damage boost on a 7 second skill make this rife for any build with or without any color. Even without the 2 set, the range and the amount of hits this attack brings is something incredible. Like this is my favorite skill to use on her regardless. I like using red with her because of I can just use white feather Asuka and just create um, uh, armor break loops. But even then, the, like this attack is immense, is great for getting butterfly stacks, it's great for getting particles. And it hits in such a wide area, you're able to just like hit maximum stacks on everything and recover if you're using Senketsu very quickly. Like every seven seconds, like you want this on cooldown. It's it's just so good. Now I move on to Cherry Blossom Frenzy. On an extreme dodge, Lena's gonna leave a tornado of petals on her last location. She's got a long way to go compared to Ingrid's evil heat blast, which is applied to a target enemy. Frenzy's nice here for having her build stacks fast on something like butterfly weapons or heal without touching a group using the lifesteal weapon. I don't like using this to explicitly deal damage, it's a nice utility to impact groups. A duration increase or a stun effect aren't very welcome, but set effects like blue's 20% damage buff is very welcome since it also stacks with vanish, like you're going to be hitting super hard if you're using Frenzy into Vanish, that's for sure. This is also nice if you use White Feather Asuka with it. This is a multi-hit skill you can drop anywhere. So if you're tr you're in a pinch and you're trying to like take someone out like Mass Timon in or something, you'll be able to just drop it and she can just stand there, get caught in it, and possibly break her entire armor bar. Over here is Coral Sword Dance. Ingrid has evil flair that moves her super fast between all of the targets on screen for huge damage. Lena has yet to enhance her wind to do so to Ingrid's speed so she localizes her power inside the flower. This skill is effectively evil flare at home, but has many more hits and super armor at the same time. 
if Coral Sword didn't have the armor and speed boost, this would be too situational, too situational and kind of bad. But since it does, it makes it so you have to account for incoming damage. You take this to something like UFS Squadron, she's just going to get shot or kicked to death. I wish she had the ability to just have less damage taken during the skill, because this is a very long skill in the first place. You just sit, there's a risk reward potential, I understand, but man, you can't, if she gets caught in a crowd, she's just going to get chopped to bits. Now here's Cherry Blossom Blinding Storm. Concentrating her entire will behind a single attack, Lena goes in for a single slice that goes through every enemy in front of her and leaves a storm in her wake. An attack like this surely would make Ingrid proud. An attack like this would very much benefit Ingrid because each hit heals 2% of the damage dealt to Lena. It's a really good skill because it does two things. It heals and it moves her away from danger. She is invincible during the dash itself, but not during the draw windup. Two color sets have the same effect, and while it looks cheap and bad that they both have the same effect, it's actually very beneficial. The Petals effect adds more hit to the Winds Explosion after the Slash, so it has more healing and more damage. The blue version adds an effect that pulls the enemy towards Lena and gives less hits. It's a nice crowd control tool, but dangerous since she's still in recovery when she drags the enemies in. I've had many occasions where I've done in testing that she'll pull a boss towards her because you're supposed to use this like you use Frenzy, Blinding Storm, and then lead it into Vanish. That's kind of dangerous because you have to break the armor in the first place and if the armor isn't broken, she's not going to pull them. So she just looks dumb and does less dits and less damage. Now we're on to Late Bloomer. This is her finisher skill that she can use to get out of recovery for many of her attacks. Ingrid has a ground recovery escape with Absolute Incinerate that she can activate after the startup frames. Lena's works like most other finishers in that it only works on recovery. She has a unique targeting on it by teleporting to the furthest enemy away and doing a downstab to them. She then leaves a pedal rain for a few more hits of damage. With it being affected by what's in the main, it's very cheap to run. Since you can activate it so often, the defense debuff and the damage buff it can apply can have really, really high uptime. Not to mention the several hits that come from the pedal rain. To activate it, it works like any other finishers. Press dodge when the aura shows up. And also when the aura so shows up, it actually flashes a small like flower for the moment, and I really like that. I wish that more characters would have... um when they have the glowing finisher effect, would just have like something that pertains to them specifically. It's a nice little stylistic effect. Now here's Storm Drive. Creating a vacuum with her wind, Lena creates negative space in front of her to pull all the enemies towards her. It doesn't get any simpler than that.
So let's conclude. Lena's a strong all-around character. Quick dashes, varied skill set, buffs, healing, and forms of crowd control. Albeit, she doesn't have the strongest crowd control in the world due to the fact that she doesn't have any slows. She only has speed boosts for herself and defense downs. The one stun that she does have is like... Like the one or two stuns that she does have aren't very remarkable in the first place. They're more for the arena. She doesn't combine, she doesn't have any slows or anything of that nature. So she's about assault, just like Ingrid. It reminds me of when they um, release characters like Rin or Ina. They're very powerful out of the box and bring in new concepts or revamp old ones to be stronger or more efficient. Lena takes ideas from Rinko and especially Ingrid on how the skill sets work. You're taking, Ingrid's, you're taking Ingrid's fluidity and assault power and putting it onto a thematically relevant character is actually very nice. Due to so many of Lena's skills dealing many hits at once, she's rife for ultimate spam. Not to mention she's one of the best White Feather supporter users thus far due to how much you can spam her multi-hit skills. Most of her skills she deals are range damage, so don't get caught up in building so much melee for her unless you're doing builds with Vanish. It's a pretty heavy ratio too, like 3 ranged hits to every 1 melee. For the most part though, I can see those who know of Lena from her past can appreciate her to be strong and also another Hell Knight representative. I like it when they make legacy characters like her to like being fun to use or thematically interesting. Lena's so much fun, like I honestly 100% could wholeheartedly recommend her because you can pair her up with Ingrid and they can have fun Hell Knight adventures and that I can 100% get behind. Thank you for coming by everybody, I hope you like, comment, rate, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you on, on next time for more timing and content.